Um, okay, so what I'm going to talk about uh, for the next few minutes is a new project um, that's been um, come out of a bunch of work that we've done within the Open Policy Agent um, over the past two years, um, and that is now being carried out by some folks at uh, Microsoft in the Azure Kubernetes team. Uh, so these are not uh, my slides. These slides were prepared by somebody that's working on the Kubernetes policy controller, um, but they do a good job of explaining why this is important. Um, so over the last uh, two years or so, um, you know, Kubernetes has seen uh, quite a bit of adoption, right? More and more enterprises are using Kubernetes. And what we're starting to see is um, our teams um, forming in these organizations that help manage Kubernetes, right? They provide Kubernetes as a service to the rest of the organization. And so what ends up happening is you have all these different um, internal customers running applications on top of Kubernetes now. You have different teams with different projects and different products and so on. And some of those teams are subject to different uh, you know, compliance policies, different governance policies. Um, and so that's this centralized uh, Kubernetes management team needs to be able to enforce all kinds of organization-specific policies over the workloads and the network services and the containers and all of those things that are running on top of Kubernetes. Now, the way that that is done today in Kubernetes is through admission control. So admission control is um, basically this problem of deciding whether or not to allow resources into the cluster, right? When they're created, the admission controllers run and they decide, should that be allowed or denied, as well as should it be mutated in any way? Now, the thing is, is that admission control policies that, are, um, that these organizations are using um, are very organization specific. Right? So a common example is that you want to set up a whitelist or a blacklist of the container uh, image registries that you can use to deploy uh, containers with. Right? That image registry is going to be specific to your organization. You know, another common example is that um, you want to restrict the, the host names that ingress objects can um, claim. Right? If you have an application that's deployed, say, in a development environment that is claiming to be you know, payments dot, uh, like, uh, you know, Alibaba.com, uh, that would be very bad, right? Suddenly you have production payment traffic going to like a developer's um, installation, right? So there are all these um, very sort of fine-grained detailed rules that need to be enforced in these clusters in order to maintain compliance with regulation and avoid to avoid outages and avoid security breaches and so on. So that's, that's admission control. And so we've been um, working on this problem for a while with the open policy agent. Um, and now what we're starting to see are people building controllers around the open policy agent um, to help um, manage policies on top of Kubernetes. So um, the Kubernetes policy controller is basically a framework um, and a service to help you create, manage, and audit um, cluster state against policies. So you can write policies in Opus policy language, and then you can have them um, both enforced at admission time as well as audited offline. So that's particularly important because you know, the policies that you have today are going to change. And so tomorrow, you're going to have new policies. And you might want to ask the question, what workloads or what deployments now violate the new policy? Right? What existing workloads violate that policy? Well, how do you do that if you've implemented all of your admission controllers in Go, right? and they only handle like incoming admission requests or incoming requests to the cluster, right? You want to be able to ask this question of, you know, what are all the, um, what are all the policies that are violated? Or what are all the um, ingress objects that are violating a particular type of policy? Or what are all the violations that exist within a particular namespace? So you want to be able to both enforce policy online at admission time, as well as offline as part of an audit, um, audit capability. Now, in addition to that, it's not just, so it's not just allow or deny. You also want to be able to control the values that are being um, specified in the manifests, right? So for example, you might want to say that all workloads need to have a product owner labeled on them, right? You might want to say that this, come, this, this application comes from this cost center, right? And you might use that to drive other things like what network policies are applied or what scheduling policies are applied. But you basically want to be able to um, enforce invariants that set default values on these, on these resources. And so this is, like, this is the goal for this, this project. Um, so the way, this, the way this is designed is that um, you, know, you have the standard um, admission control webhooks in the Kubernetes API server. And those call out to the Kubernetes policy service, um, which basically proxies the call over to OPA. Um, and then we have another component called kube uh, management today, which is responsible for replicating 
uh, Kubernetes state into OPA so that you can write policy over like context, right? So for example, a, com a, a, a simple example of a policy that requires context is that you want to avoid having uh, conflicting host names on ingresses in two different namespaces. Right? In order to do that, you need to be able to say, OK, I have an incoming ingress object, and I have an existing set of ingresses created in different namespaces, and I need to search over them to see if there's any conflicts. Right? So what we do is we replicate. You can configure kube management to replicate state from the API server into OPA, and then it can, it can use that when it's making policy decisions. So um, there's an initial version of the policy controller that's, uh, that you can see. It's under the Azure organization uh, Kubernetes policy controller repository. Um, and this is sort of the initial place where they put the code. The plan is to move this upstream um, as a sub-project of SIG auth, uh, because um, at the end of the day, um, you know, this, this belongs in a, in, a, in a sort of a central place that's owned by the community. Um, you know, it doesn't make sense to have N implementations of this core functionality. And so we want to be able to have a place where everybody can kind of participate. Um, there's a bunch of improvements that are planned, uh, like, for example, allowing you to um, basically push policies into the system via CRD, um, having a kind of a library of standard policies that you can enable very easily, right? Things like controlling, you know, ingress host names and container registries and, and policies over persistent volumes and so on. There's a lot of common uh, policies, and so we can create a, a library of these things that are parameterizable uh, and, and easy to use. Um, and then there's some work planned to help uh, improve how policies get validated and how conflicts are detected and so on. Uh, so if you're interested in uh, these sort of admission control policies um, or this type of work, I recommend that you check out the, the repository for the project right now. And then we also have a channel on the Open Policy Agent Slack organization. Um, where uh, a bunch of people are starting to talk about this, this project. So uh, check out Kubernetes-Policy on the Open Policy Agent Slack org. Uh, that might move to the, I guess that would move to the Kubernetes Slack org once the project uh, is upstreamed, but that's the state of it right now. So uh, thank you very much. That's, that's all I have. Howard? Uh, this is this is like the, the beginning of the project. Um, it's using OPA internally. Um, a lot there's a number of customers that are using OPA today, or end users that are running OPA today for this problem. Um, but this is sort of I think the long term vision is to have this um, integration between kube management and OPA and and other things like audit all in one place that's part of the Kubernetes ecosystem. Um, I wouldn't call it a prototype. Uh, it, the question is, is this a prototype? Um, and I, it's not a prototype. Uh, it's, it's, they're, they're developing it basically in the open. So yeah, it's, it's early days, obviously. It's alpha right now. But um, over time, it'll, it'll stabilize and become more mature. Um, well, so I think that, uh, I mean, so, so this is just focused on admission control types of policies, okay? So I could imagine that you might want to have an admission control policy for the scheduling policies, right? Um, you could end up having, like, I, I would assume that you're selecting uh, pods based on, like, you're, you decide which scheduling policy to apply based on some sort of label selector today. And so, you know, how, how does that, how do you check that people are applying the right labels? Right, in order to get scheduled correctly, that's something that you might need to that a cluster administrator might need to enforce, I would imagine. And so that would be like a good fit for this. So it's not replacing that in any way. It's not replacing network policy or RBAC or anything like that. It's just providing a way to apply controls over those things. Yeah. So, uh, sorry, can you repeat the question? Uh, Kubernetes. Service. Yeah. Yeah, the, I guess the, yeah, the Kubernetes policy service in this diagram is implementing the admission, the, dy the external dynamic admission control API, right? Which, you know, um, and then, yeah, and then I guess they have it factored out into a separate component to call into OPA, but um, yeah. How do we define? 
in this part. It's all that I'm also Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's a that's a great question. Um, so, like, this is an example of an admission control policy written with OPA, right? So, OPA, I I can't go into too much detail right now, but it basically gives you a a high level declarative language to codify policies in, right? So, this is an example of an admission control policy that's searching over for for searching for ingresses um, and then detecting conflicts, right? So, you could probably express some of that scheduling policy in here, um, or you could load it into here and, and interpret it. Um, yeah. But that's, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we should we should chat more after the, yeah. yeah. Cool, yeah, we should chat more afterwards. Okay, I wanna make sure that uh, Howard has time to talk about his, uh, his topic. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. And this is actually the afternoon of last day of conference. And it's such a pleasure for me to meet you, meet you here. And just now, the two co-workers of the policy group, or I would say two core contributors, delivering the speech just now. And they will talk about the scheduling and the overview. And Torin is basically in charge of OPA and the only one policy controller, and also a main developer as for me. I would like to share with you some of my insights about the proposal or idea. And we've been having this idea for a long period of time, and we've been starting that at the beginning of this year. And when we were operating the policy group, we had the idea that might be a long-term assumption. And here, I would like to bring that on the table for your discussion. As you all know, we have all kinds of different standard interface CRI, CN, and as for these interfaces, they can define how we're going to do the interaction communication on the data level. And we have different runtime. Just a moment. CPI, for CPI we have the similar ideas. What we are going to do or think about is if in the entire Kubernetes or in need of the policy in framework, do we need to have the standard interface like this? Why do we need that? First of all, the most important reason is that from the definition of that, for policy, we use that in telecommunication area. If you have the background information, you will know that the policy enforcement control and also the policy description are frequently used items or terminologies in telecommunication area. And for us, we want to borrow that from the perspective of policy point, it's actually a logic reference or logic reference in terms of interface. That is to say, how we're going to implement the policy control when we have the OPA as a policy engine, how we're going to make and implement the decision. There are actually a lot of them. For example, for schedulers, they can implement one specific policy. So here, it's actually in the repository, not in the data level. For the execution or implementation point, it can also be in the data. For example, we have a lot of network SDN or storage SDN. And we have a lot of them which can pol consume policy. So if that's the case, then we can throw the policy into the data and we can do the enforcement during the data. For PP, it's logic reference point. It's not fixed. For PCP, as I've just said, it's basically referring to the policy engine and also the logic interface with the policy implementation point. 
For the policy mentioned, it should be based upon the definition of the policy. How will that make the decision in terms of control? For example, as Taring said, to do a mission, to to enter or not enter into a specific point. That's the process I want to talk about. And another matter here is the scope issue for policy description. How will you describe the policy? For example, you can use OPA, and it has its own set of language or description to describe the policy. Basically, there are various kinds of ways that can be used to describe the policy or JSON. All of them will do the job. For developers, PDP, it's not in scope. So we can see that if we want to think about or figure out the architecture for the policy, it should be like this. We have the place for description, we have control, we have the implementation as well. For CPI interface, it refers to the reference between CPC and CPP, or the interface between that. Why, we, why do we have to standardize the interface? That is because PEP is different. If we have the standard in the first place, or we have the standard policy interface, then it's convenient for us to deploy and describe the policy. We can actually do that in a uniform manner, or else it's hard for us to coordinate all of them. And we might have a lot of, I mean, totally different ways to do the deployment, and I won't go detail into the definition. For standard interface, we often have the CIUD examples or instances for CPI. It's not just like CNI, CII. For policy lifecycle control, we have creation or access control and a policy or upgrading policy for each life cycle. Behind that, we see the interconnectivity, for example, after we get the upgrading. So based on the current policy, you think about how to cope or deal with the upgrading of the policy. That's the thing we need to think about. And later, here are some of my ideas for reference, for example, OPA. Or for the policy engine, it can take K8 scheduler as an implementation point. Or the K8 policy can be taken as a large K8 policy engine overall. Or we have the commonality here. I'm not sure whether you have heard the speech given by Wang Hui, the irre irreversible delete issue. For OpenICS, it can use the service broken to connect external resources. You can also use the CPI interface to manage it. So two minutes left. Do you have any questions? In the CPI architectures, does it cover the network policy? For example, networking isolations on certain nodes. So the question is, in the data side, would the PEP cover some networking-related policies? <coughs> I think it will cover networking because networking is a typical demonstration of the policies and you have mentioned a very typical scenario and we will definitely cover it. I think the abstraction of this scenario is a challenge. So for the data, 
if you use networking or storage or any other con conventional ways to consider it, it's very difficult to be consistent. But a policy would provide you an abstract perspective, and you can abstract it. So policy would describe when and what time, what should you do. So we welcome you to join our discussions. Thank you. Thank you.